Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 17 and today we are returning with two big games with our Tigers away at New White Hart Lane against Spurs and at home against Southampton at the KCOM. Before we play those games though, I'm going to show you how Hull have been getting on off camera. So of course in the last episode you saw back-to-back -back defeats away against West Brom and then at home to Chelsea as well. I then played five games off camera and our poor run of form continued. We started with a 3-0 defeat away at New White Hart Lane against Spurs in the EFL Cup 4th round and had a goalless draw away at Selhurst Park against Palace. Uh, and then following that we took on Newcastle at the KCOM Stadium and we lost this game as well 2-1. But we were leading in the first half through Brian the Kid Donnelly scoring his second league goal for the club on the end of a Josh Tymon cross. That was a match made in heaven. The boys linking up for Donnelly's first goal of the game put us up by a goal. We were plain sailing and then just past the hour mark, Alfred and Dye stupidly got himself sent off and we capitulated and conceded two goals in five minutes in the final 15 minutes and lost the game 2-1. So after that game, I was, I was literally raging. That would have been just our second win of the Premier League this season and Dye cost us the game. No, way, no other way of looking at it. So uh, very, very big blow. Then we lost 4-0 away at Old Trafford against United. I put Tom Heaton in between the sticks for that game, thinking he can't be worse than Raj. He was. So uh, that experiment's already over. And uh, following that, we finally got ourselves just our second league win in the series. Uh, so, well, <laughs> second league win in the season. If it was series, I wouldn't be here by now. But it's a second league win in the series after a huge, absolutely huge 1-0 victory over Bournemouth at the KCOM Stadium. Abel Hernandez converting a late penalty with seven minutes to go. So just our second win of the season so far in the Premier League. And right now, now it leaves us in 13th place with 13 games played and only two wins picked up from 13. It's been a really, really poor start to season three. And as we approach the midway point, we're only three points above the drop zone right now. It's very congested as well at the bottom end of the table. Just six points separate 20th and 13th place. So it's really, really tight right now. And we've got to start stringing wins together because right now, I mean, only 11 goals scored, five defeats in 13. We are not going to stay up with this sort of form. And despite the fact that this season so far we haven't even been that close to relegation zone other than one game where we lost after the United game 4-0 um, we, we've sort of kept ourselves where we were last season for a lot of the, uh, the year really, sort of lower mid table but I know for a fact that if this form continues we will drop into the relegation zone and uh, we'll, we'll struggle to get out of it so um, yeah, got to pick it up and, uh, and hopefully we will today so two big games, let's just dive straight into it the first one is away at New White Hart Lane, I always lose to Spurs on FM, so I'm not expecting much, but we shall hope for the best regardless. Uh, on the injury report right now, Jordan Ibe and Robert Snodgrass are returning from their long-term injuries, which is fantastic, but probably won't play in today's two games. We'll have to wait and see. Um, and Ryan Mason is suspended for this game against Spurs. So this will be the team for the game then, sticking with the 4-1-2-3 DM wide. These are the instructions. Now, I do want to say real briefly, in the last episode I asked for tactical suggestions, but I'm recording this episode before that one goes live, so if there are any left in the last episode, I appreciate them but I'll get round to them as soon as it's gone live for me so I can actually see them but uh, anyway this is the team for the game regardless Raj in goal back for time and Carter Vickers Davies stepping in and Fulkier in midfield and Dai Dos Santos and Ozcan on the wings Delafeo and Leco and up top on his own Borja Baston on the bench Heaton, Maguire, Robertson, Henriksen, Hernandez, Asfio, uh, Brian Donnelly and Abel Hernandez and yeah not expecting much from the first game but I'd certainly take a point that would be a good result for us let's see if we can get it come on Hulse practically always lose to Spurs and particularly away from home they're just such a great team in FM I mean they're a great team anyway but um, I'm hoping for the best you can see Spurs actually aren't as fully fit compared to our team going to this game so what I actually might do straight away is keep the tempo on higher and try and stretch the play out a little bit and uh, and go down the flanks if we can and, uh, and see if that works for us. Anyway, first highlight here. Probably not. First highlight here. And we do have the ball as Borja Baston receives it. But he's not got much support here. What can the Spaniard do as he comes inside? Needs a teammate. Or does he? Well, yes, he does. He finds Ozcan. He's about 25 yards from goal. Keeps on going. Shoots and puts it wide. First highlight coming to us. That's a rare sight. But uh, Ozcan cannot hit a target. And another highlight. And once again, it's in possession of Hull as Leco looks for Borja Baston. Llorente has missed out here. Baston could be through. He is. And oh, Hugo Lloris makes a really important save at his near post. Borja Baston almost opening the scoring for Hull. Both highlights coming for the visitors. But sadly, a good save there keeps Spurs on level terms. But this has been an encouraging first half from, uh, from Hull. Can we go in front at some point? Well, not right 
right now, still nil-nil, but very encouraging scenes here. I mean, I say that, Spurs will still be in a better team if you judge the stats. And there's a highlight for Spurs here as well. Ericsson takes the corner. It's headed away by Carter Vickers, but every single time there's a highlight just before the break, I always feel like it's going to be a goal for my opponents. And let's see if that theory comes true here. Deli Ali on the ball, plays it through to Firmino, and the former Liverpool man has shot the ball into the back of the net, and Raj is beaten at his near post. I mean, I'll tell you this right now, I've, I've given him the vice captaincy, he'll often wear the armband with Davies not always in the team, but he has had a very, very poor season. Not necessarily based on statistics, but just what's happening on the pitch. The goals that Raj have let in have been really poor, and look at that, you've got to get your angles right, bruv, seriously, that is terrible goalkeeping. And it's 1-0 to Spurs. And that's such a shame because we're actually doing all right in this first half. Now we trail and uh, we're not getting back into it. We never get back into a game when uh, we trail at the break against a big team. It, it never happens. So frustrating from Raz. You got his angles completely wrong there. Honestly, it was so easy for Firmino to slot it in. It, it should have been an acute angle, but instead it was an obtuse one. As Song Min Shan is through and makes it two. Brilliant. There's me talking about mathematics, and I get punished for it. Spurs go two goals up. Curtis Davies missing the interception. Do you know why? He's thinking about life in Italy. He's already thinking about life in Italy when he leaves come the end of the season. He's not, he's not bothered anymore, is he? Davies don't care about captaining the team out now in his final season. Raj can't handle the pressure. My two captains have got literally no care for Hull City, and now this could become 3-0. Corner, Lamella takes it. It's not fully dealt with. Raj catches the ball, though. Well done. Was that the highlight? Was, was that it? Wow, okay. Anyway, uh, chance here, and I finds uh, Ozcan. Ozcan on the turn, looks for space, but he loses out to Llorente. Ozcan's been terrible in the games he's played this season. I thought he was going to be a wonder kid for us. Instead, he's a wonder flop as Deli Ali shoots, and oh God, I'll tell you one player that's a wonder flop, Radkovic, get him off. Jesus Christ, a former Liverpool man, Firmino, into Deli Ali, and the XMK Dons man slots the ball into the bottom corner. But look at that from Raj, he's right there. I mean, it's placed pretty accurately, but he just, he's got butter fingers. It just literally squirms through them and nestles into the back of the net. 3-0, this is, this is horrific. To think we could have gone 1-0 up in the first half. Son on the ball finds Christian Eriksen, and Eric Dyer on the ball finds Lamella, and the Argentine finds Firmino. Firmino to Dyer, it's 4 we can't defend. We've got literally no discipline. Oh, Dyer's offside. <laughs> Thank God. Saved by the lino. I did say in the last episode as well, we should start more games on counter. But I just feel like control wielded us more results last season, you know. And um, I, j I wanted to stick with that philosophy. Like when I find something that works for us over a period of time, I'm really hesitant to change things. Um, but we've got to start on counter more often. We're just not a good enough team. So 3-0 will most likely be the final score then. And uh, Spurs are going to get a comfortable victory. They always do. When Spurs play us, it's a guaranteed three points. It's so frustrating. But we can never, ever, ever beat Spurs. And, uh, and that should do it. So 3-0 the final score. A very disappointing defeat once again. And uh, we slip down to 15th place in the table right now. Assertively once more, I'm going to say I'm far from pleased with what I saw from the team and try and motivate and fire them up. All my team appear to be fired up and motivated, but they never are. They, they never respond. So uh, I think they're just putting that on for me to try and make me believe I'm good at team talks when really uh, they couldn't care less about what I'm saying. So yeah, 3-0 the final score and, and we're in trouble, man. I mean, really, we really are in trouble. Just two wins from 14 games, 20 goals conceded and only 11 scored. Something's got to change in January, man. I don't know what to do, but something needs to change. Everton, by the way, struggling big time. And now Schneidlin's out for five months as well. I tell you this right now, I have been shocked at how bad Everton have been this year. I mean, when you look at their team, they have still got some really, really good players there. I mean, some very good players. You know, Michael Keane is there. Uh, they bought Creswell from uh, from West Ham last year. Seamus Coleman's still there. Schneidel in there as well. Uh, Ross Barkley still there too. Um, it's a very good team. Why they are in 20th place and rock bottom, I have got literally no idea. All right then, guys, so second and final game of today's episode, and we take on Southampton here at the KCOM. This is a massive game right now. 15th playing host to 14th, one point and one goal separating the sides in the table right now, and this is going to be huge. Uh, one change for the game... Uh, considering what I was going to do, and that's drop Donnelly to the bench and play Hernandez. I was going to put Donnelly back in, but he just got a cold. So he's not he's not fully fit for the game, which is kind of annoying. I mean, 
And it is December, but come on, mate. But uh, this is uh, the team for the game then. I'll play the 4 1 4 1, change the instructions slightly. Um, we are going to go ahead and mix the passing up a little bit and start on counter as well, because we just can't control games like I want us to anymore. So we'll start on counter, and hopefully that'll help us out a little bit and hit teams on the break and, uh, and use the pace from the wing. So this will be the team for the game. And uh, does it say mixed passing as well? Well, mixed passing too. Uh, and this will be the team for the game. Um, right, do I drop Raj or do I play Heaton? I mean... Oh god, Raj, Raj, I, Raj is developing well. I want to keep Raj playing for that development, but he's not been good this year. Um, what should I do here? Should I play Heaton or Raj? I'll put Heaton back in. We'll put Heaton back in, and uh, hopefully that'll help. So Tom Heaton will come in then in place of Raj. You're back for a time and Carter Vickers Maguire. No Curtis Davies in the match day squad and full Kier in midfield. And Di Henriksen and Dos Santos on the wings, Delafeo and Leco. And so Abel Hernandez will get his first start in the Premier League this season, I think. Is that right I think um okay second start of the season uh, on the bench uh, Raj Ayala Robertson Ozcan Theo Hernandez Boa Baston and Brian Donnelly uh, Jordan I'm not match fit yet but actually I might put him on the bench for Theo Hernandez and uh, bring him on if we need to at some point despite his very low match sharpness so second game today we knew we weren't gonna get anything from Spurs we need to get something from this one come on whole city we have to get a win man we need to climb our way up the table because right now we are going down if we keep this form up come on hole big game let's get the three points shall we let's show the world what this team is all about shall we come on whole city this is the game this is the game where we turn our form around and start saving our season it's been poor it's been very very poor this first half of the year let's get it sorted in this game and get a big three points no 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 oh my god I just don't know what to say. It's not tactics. It's not my tactics, okay? It's it's something embedded in these whole players' minds. They just have this loser's mentality. Tadic crosses. Where, why is no one with Troy Deeney? Why is no one sticking with Troy Deeney? 1-0. Just relegate us now. Just send us down. We haven't been in the bottom three places all season long, yet it feels like an inevitability that we will get relegated this season because we are literally awful. I mean, I was coming to this season thinking we made improvements from last year. Evidently not. Like, somehow our team has got worse. I don't know how. It looks a better team. We've got a young team full of players that are developing well and looking good, but somehow we've got worse. Fakir on the ball comes inside. Heaton makes the save. Well done, Tom Heaton. And Fourquier clears it. This is embarrassing. I mean, this is really, really embarrassing. Like, we are all over the shop. Troy Deeney shoots blocked by Maguire. I mean, I, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You know, when I play FM late at night, oftentimes I'll say to myself, I'll play till I win. Like, if I'm on a really poor run of form, I'll say, I'll play till I win. Because I don't like going to bed angry. I want to go to bed, you know, feeling positive about my save and just in general. But uh, if we were playing till I won in today's episode of FM, I think we would literally be here until Friday. I mean, this is unbelievable, man. We are all over the shop right now. How did we beat Bournemouth? More to the point, how did we beat Reading 3-0 on the opening day? Did that even happen? Was that a dream? Come on, we are still in this game. We're only trading by one. Josh Tyman on the ball finds Delafeu, and the Spaniard turns one. He's such a greedy little boy, though, Delafeu. I mean, he keeps on shooting from just outside the area, but that never, ever works. He scored a couple of goals this season at City, but he, he keeps on shooting when he could easily pass it to a teammate in a better position. He's such a greedy little lad. Right, we need a goal, so I'm going to take off and die, and I'm going to bring on Borja Baston to play alongside Abel Hernandez. And Leco's been terrible in this game. So I'm going to take him off and bring on Jordan Ibe, who is really, really poor for match fitness right now. But we need something working for us. Let's mix the passing up still, close down a bit more, go a bit higher in our defensive line, a much higher the tempo, be a bit more fluid as opposed to being rigid, and try and go down the, w uh, the wings if we can a little bit. And, uh, and see if we can actually get something from this game. We're still only trailing by one, so there's still time. We've got to find a goal, and this season we've really, really lacked goals as Josh Tymer gets on the ball. Come on, whole city. Henriksen now. Dos Santos. Jonathan Dos Santos to Hernandez. The Uruguayan skips past a couple, but hits it straight at Fraser Forster. Come on! We're going down. We are going down. One final chance with this highlight. Borja Baston loses out to Darmian in the air, though. And now Jay Rodriguez pokes it through. Carter Vickers is there. 
Come on, Hull City, just one more chance as we're in stoppage time. Dormian is winning every ball in the air, it seems, and on the ground as well. Henriksen lost out. Come on, you've got to be better in those 50-50 situations. Oh, my goodness. Come on, can we get one more chance? Baston, win that son. Well done, Borja Baston. Jordan Ive, down the right-hand side. First game since injury. Henriksen now. Baston. Baston. Borja Baston. There's a man out wide in Tymon. Delefeu. Baston. Tymon. Crosses. Bertrand. Yes, Abel Hernandez, Abel Hernandez, 1-1, one, one. and we've got the equalising goal, right, go contain, go contain now, do not throw this away, go contain, and make sure you see out this point, I will take it, and the game is over, oh, thank God for that, Abel Hernandez makes it 1-1, one, one. and we claim a very crucial point, uh, I'm going to calmly say we are unlucky because the boys are frightened and nervous. I mean, we've got we to calm these lads down, man. Seriously, I can't even say we're disappointed with the defensive efforts. But we stayed in the game. We kept on pushing. And we finally found a late equalizing goal through Abel Hernandez. So we still dropped down the table once more. We're now down to 16th place. That's the joint lowest we've been all season long. Having said that... We're almost due to pay Everton £6 million for Delafay. That's not good. But having said that, at least we got a point and we didn't see the lost streak get extended to two. So we're going to end today's episode off 15 games into the season. Still only two wins so far, but now four points above the drop zone. And uh, there's a long way to go. We've had a really, really poor first half of the season. But um, we've got to look at every single positive right now. So I'll call that a good point, even though it clearly wasn't. But that will end today's episode of our Football Manager series, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's episode, then please do consider leaving a like. We shall return with games against... Hmm. I mean, this is going to be a really tight season, it seems, down the bottom end of the table. So I don't want to skip too many games. Um, Sunderland are in 10th, Everton are in 19th. I kind of want to come back for the Everton game in 19th. Um, we might do a Mersey sides double, actually. Everton and Liverpool both away from home in mid-January. And uh, you'll see if anything goes on in the January transfer window too uh, in those episodes. Although I want to play Ipswich because they're in 18th place right now. Oh, what do I want to do? Um, should we do a triple header maybe? Should we do a triple header in the next episode? I'm yet to do a triple header yet. Um, do you know what? Let's do a triple header. So Everton away, Liverpool away and Ipswich at home. Three huge games in mid-January. That, uh, that could well define our season. So we'll come back for those three games, a triple header special in the next episode, and I'll see you for that very soon. So thank you for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day. Much love to you all, and I shall see you for the next episode of our Football Manager series, the triple header special, very soon. Bye.